Hey, welcome back. Just thought I'd share with you uh, what I've been up to lately. I've got uh, some cylinders here, uh, actually four of them. Let's see if we can get them all here. Um, sorry, three Yamahas and one Honda, and uh, the bike that's above them here is the uh, Hon the blue Honda Express. It's been the subject of some of my most recent videos. I call it uh, affectionately the Sfaderator, uh, named after its former owner. Who, who knows, uh, maybe it's true owner. Maybe it'll end up back with Mr. Sfader, I don't know. But uh, all I did to this thing, to the Express, was put on that uh, Techno Boss pipe, which is, you know, probably not the greatest uh, performance pipe, but it's cheap. I think I got it for um, 48 bucks or something like that, and uh, I had it welded to a Honda Express header and mounted it with that uh, little hardware store mounting bracket thingy. And then uh, the other thing I did was um, what I'm about to show you. But I did it by hand. I got these back. I took it, uh, I sent them to a machine shop in Texas. And on this one, I had one and a half millimeters taken off uh, uh, the top of the cylinder here where the uh, cylinder head meets it kind of the cylinder head mating surface. Uh, that's a, that's uh it looks like a Honda. That's the uh, Honda Express. Uh, pretty much the same cylinder for the Express, Urban Express. Uh, the Hobbit is different slightly. Uh, and then uh, the Express SR I think is the same. And then Yamaha, Yamaha, Yamaha. And I had, uh, what I have, one and a half off of that, 1.9 off of that. And this was really the original job. This is a YT60 Yamaha cylinder, 44 millimeters. These other threes are, are 40. Uh, and this one, I didn't have any taken off the, the top. Uh, I think they call it deck the cylinder or mill the cylinder. A lot of times I hear deck the head, mill the, anyhow, same sort of thing. They're taking material off of this. And uh, this one I had bored out because it was too worn out. And I had it bored out to accept a 45 millimeter piston instead of a 44. So we're going up slightly in, uh, in uh, the cylinder diameter size. So um, let me see if I can locate. There we go. Found it already. So the reason I did this is especially on the Honda, and I have to double check the Yamahas, but uh, let's just move this one out of the picture again because uh, that's a little different than the rest. The reason I did this was uh, on the Honda I noticed that the piston at the bottom of its stroke still blocks uh, a little bit of all of the ports. And, and the Yamaha, I know it blocks about three or four millimeters of the exhaust port. I'm not sure. I'd, ha I'd have to take one apart and look at it to see if the piston also blocks the intake and the uh, transfer ports. And so what I did, I did this by kind of with a belt sander and then sanding by hand, which I don't recommend. Um, although if you get a really coarse grit sandpaper, you can remove uh, a bit of material by hand. Um, but uh, you'll still uh, come to an appreciation about just how much a millimeter of material can be. It is an awful lot. Uh, so anyways, um, if you take one of these spacers, this is a one millimeter pa spacer I got off of Treatland for the Honda Express, Urban Express, Hobbit, Express SR, that whole family of Express uh, related cycles. And this goes down by the base gasket. And so if uh, you put a base, a base gasket and then the spacer and then another base gasket, and most base gaskets are about a half a millimeter thick uncompressed, 
um, that'll push and then you put this and then you put the cylinder on so you know I don't have a base base gasket then the spacer then another base gasket you can see that this cylinder let me do that again did I get that on film so base gasket first then the spacer then another base gasket um, that's going to push the cylinder jug forward and uh, also all the ports forward about you know 1.5 millimeters we'll say that the the cylinders already set up to you know deal with one base gasket so you don't really have to account for that um, let's say a, a, I'll, I'll find out soon enough let's say a compressed base gasket is not a half a millimeter but four tenths of a millimeter I don't know I don't know for sure we'll find out but we'll say it compresses some so then I'm moving all those uh, ports you can see one there up 1.4 or 1.5 millimeters depending on how much uh, this and an extra base gasket actually are somewhere around one and a half millimeters doesn't sound like a whole lot but in the two-stroke world one or two millimeters is quite a bit and that will uh, essentially push those ports up further and uh, to compensate for it you take off material off the top of the cylinder so that the, the piston still comes to the end of the cylinder at the top of its stroke um, and I can always take a little bit of material off with my uh, sandpaper hand, hand sanding technique if for some reason um, uh, we'll say the uh, it doesn't quite come up to where it should but I, I can take off uh, a, you know a tenth or two tenths or three tenths of a millimeter uh, with a little bit of work uh, with just some really coarse grit sandpaper you just basically get a piece of glass some sandpaper on top of the glass and then you uh, let's move this over here some it would get a better look. Or you, you just sand and figure eight pattern, and then uh, uh, it's a bit of uh, elbow grease, but you know, such is life. Now, you can get these uh, spacers at Treatland in eight tenths of a millimeter, one millimeter, and two millimeters. And then I found them at Moped Division, I think six tenths of a millimeter as well, and maybe elsewhere. And then for the QT50, there's a guy on eBay, I, I can try to link to all this, who makes uh, copper base gaskets. And he made me uh, a one millimeter and uh, a one and a half, I believe. Yeah, because I, I took one and a half off this and two off of that. So um, that's what I'm doing. And you know my results with uh, this this express have been uh, pretty impressive uh, although I you know I didn't have it jetted right and I may have had an air leak at the cylinder head um, but I got this up to almost 40 miles an hour you know basically uh, I know you can't see it all basically a stock express doing 40 with you know a crappy pipe and just this little cylinder trick that I you know originally did by hand so, um, hey, that's what's going on. Uh, this Honda, the Honda cylinder that you were looking at earlier, right there, this one, is uh, going on to that uh, Express, Urban Express hybrid bike that I have. And the only other thing I did to this cylinder and also the one that's on this spaderator bike is I opened up the exhaust port uh, on both the bikes as, as well I may have I may have raised this just slightly maybe a millimeter already so we'll, I guess we'll be pushing out in effect the exhaust port two and a half millimeters so uh, now you want to be careful with how much you take how much you push it up because uh, you know depending on the pipe you have 
the farther you effect effectively raise the port, the uh, higher RPMs that are required for the pipe to hit. And uh, you may not be able to get to, you know, let's say, you know, 8,500, 9,000 RPMs, you know, with the stock cylinder. I don't know. We'll find out. But, uh, of course, I didn't raise it that high. And then these Yamaha cylinders are destined for uh, the, black, the black QT, for one, maybe one of my townies, and then... Um, I'm building uh, another engine with this uh, YT60 cylinder and that puke, uh, puke, puck, however you say it, cylinder head, which, which has the same uh, mounting distance between the studs. The, the puke heads work out the same. Which makes you wonder, I wonder what the stroke is on those puke kits or puck kits or puck Puck, puck. I don't know how to say it, man. I don't know. How come everything's so hard to pronounce in the moped world? I don't know, man. But uh, uh, there have been some a quick update on this fader raider. Uh, I got new tires front and back. I think I fixed the brake light uh, because uh, the brake switches. I replaced that one of the brake switches and disconnected the others. Uh, basically, that little. Uh, nub wasn't popping out like it should and I'll grab another brake switch up at the handlebars from my parts bike and uh, I'd rejetted the carburetor it's it, it was too rich and so I messed with that uh, and uh, I added some reflectors to the front right above the fork there. There's reflectors on both sides. And um, charge up the battery. Something's up with the battery where it's either not taking a charge or it's not being charged. I got a feeling it's not being charged because uh, the battery tender seemed to have charged it up just fine. So something's up with the charging system. I noticed, now let's just do a little walkie, walkie. Um, on this, the yellow and the white wires are so faded that they're hard to tell apart, but I'm pretty sure that on camera it's a little better. That's yellow, that's white, and they are hooked up properly. I, I added some wiring for something else that you'll see in the future. Added a little double connector thing here that I need to plug into. And... Uh, On this one that I on this cylinder that I did by hand, um, the piston doesn't quite come to the top yet. I've got some more sanding to do, which is not much fun, but uh, the compression's still pretty good, even though it doesn't quite come to the top. And you know maybe I don't want the compression to be as high as it possibly can because more compression, more heat, more problems, right? So then uh, I've actually got. Uh, let's go around to the other side. Some plans for the carburetor here. Um, just using this uh, cheap eBay carb, which has been working great. Uh, it's got the lever. I need to. Yeah, there's my chopstick choke, right? Um, got some other carburetors that I might throw on here. So, anyways. This is getting kind of long in tooth, so we will move on. I'll just show you real quick. Uh, on the other side, I switched out this, this brake, brake switch. and um, I don't know if you can see it, but in there is... Uh, I didn't switch out this one. I just disconnected it. But in there is like a little rod that's supposed to pop out. And uh, when it pops out, it makes the connection, and then the lever pushes it back in, and then it doesn't make the connection, so the lights go out. So, maybe it's time for a little ride. Anyhow, hey, thanks for watching.